Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Quantum experiments have long demonstrated that subatomic particles somehow know about each other instantly and at great distances. Institutional science utilizes terms such as quantum entanglement and spooky action to describe the phenomena. But the Electric Universe theory offers a very different perspective. The speed of light limit to communication imposed by the theory of relativity is not a universal speed limit. Physicist Wal Thornhill describes how this can be observed in our own celestial neighborhood. He writes, If gravity traveled at the slow speed of light, the Earth would be pulled to where the sun appears in the sky and not the sun's real position in space. This would result in a slingshot effect and toss planets out of the solar system in short order. Observations of close binary stars where the effect would be extreme and quickly noticeable show that gravity must operate at a speed in excess of 20 billion times the speed of light to prevent spiraling orbits. The Sun and the Earth have instantaneous information about their locations. In this Space News episode, Bishop Nicholas Sykes elaborates the fundamental differences in this regard between the electric universe and standard cosmology. In my Thunderbolts Space News video, Are the Dominoes Falling?, it was argued that since the gravitational attraction between the Sun and the Earth must operate almost instantaneously, or else the Earth and the other planets would be slung out of their orbits, this fact was irreconcilable with the dictate of the theory of relativity that the fastest possible messenger between one point and another was light or, to be more accurate, the electromagnetic radiation of which visible light might be a component. This is because if the supposedly fastest possible messenger between the Sun and the Earth travels at the speed of light, then the gravitational attraction that exists between the Sun and the Earth could not be messaged between them any faster than light can travel between them. Since it is known that light takes 8.3 minutes approximately to travel from the Sun to the Earth, it would have to be presumed that the gravitational attraction is messaged from the Sun to the Earth and vice versa within a period of time no shorter than 8.3 minutes also. However, such a deduction must inevitably bear with it the conclusion that the Earth is actually being attracted to some point in space that was the location of the Sun's centre of gravity 8.3 minutes of time in the past, rather than where that centre of gravity actually is when the Earth experiences the attraction. But that conclusion bears with it a number of fatal contradictions. Contradiction number one. Let us regard the planetary orbits of the solar system as circular, which we may do without prejudice to the argument. A centripetal force upon the orbiting Earth must be orthogonal to the motion of the planet. However, the gravitational force transmitted from the Sun to the Earth at the speed of light will, when it reaches the Earth, be displaced from the path it would have taken if the force had operated instantaneously. It is no longer orthogonal to the Earth's orbit, hence is no longer centripetal and would influence the planet over an astronomically short time to leave the orbit. Yet this does not happen. Contradiction number two. There is no time-lapse term in Copernicus's or Kepler's equations for their observed planetary orbits, which do not therefore anticipate any time-lapse such as gravitational attraction functioning as slowly as the speed of light would necessitate. Neither is there a time-lapse term in Newton's third law, which we interpret as action and reaction are equal and opposite. In a Newtonian heliocentric system, we understand the forces of attraction that the primary and its satellite exert upon one another to be equal and opposite. A reaction that was caused by an action 8.3 minutes beforehand, in the case of the Earth and the Sun, would no longer be the opposite that the law describes. The effect of this can be seen from my diagram of the Sun 
as the reference point or frame of reference for an orbiting Earth. The issue was very well dealt with in the Thunderbolts Forum of October the 22nd, 2016, in which reference was made to work by Tom Van Flanden, in which Sir Arthur Eddington was quoted as having exposed by 1920 the issue in terms of the couple which a light speed gravity between Sun and Earth would exert. This is the same argument as I am using, employing a slightly different viewpoint. I had not actually read this work before my video was produced. It is left to others to account for the fact that Eddington became a great pro proponent for Einsteinian relativity in spite of his work on this issue. The connection then between the Sun and the planets should be envisaged as an ether tight rope. In the current EU model, the ether of space is understood, as Wal Thornhill describes it, to consist of a plenum of neutrinos. In our experience, a rope may carry a transverse wave caused by moving one end of the rope, perhaps from one side to the other, or perhaps up and down. After some time, that transverse wave motion will reach the other end of the rope. However, if the rope is made of barely extendable material, and if one end is tugged, that tug will be felt at the other end very much faster, almost by comparison, at the time the tug is made. This comparison may be likened to the relationship between the transmission of light by a transverse electromagnetic wave and the very much faster gravitational attraction between two massive bodies. Electromagnetic radiation is by its nature transverse, but gravitational attraction, or indeed if it is so interpreted repulsion, is longitudinal. Kepler's and Newton's laws may be thought to assume any time factor to be so vanishingly small that it can be neglected altogether. The EU model of gravitation requires an almost instantaneity condition too, though that almost is not claimed to be collapsed into absolute instantaneity. There is, after all, the possibility of a correction of planetary orbits that start to go astray by extra Newtonian electrical attractions and repulsions, for Newtonian physics does not account for the orbital stability that is observed or the small corrections that are from time to time manifest. Such corrections, however, could not prevent the first order steady propulsion out of any orbit that a light speed gravity would inevitably produce. There are many other arguments against Einsteinian relativity, some of which declare that the great story of the ether drift experiments of the last century is commonly misreported. The light exceeding speed of gravity by far is but one more falling domino collapsing a credible theory of relativity. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.